Hey everyone, welcome to the final edition of the Angry Artist Podcast. Now, it doesn't mean I'll stop doing YouTube videos, but I wanted to move on to something more productive because I've really exhausted so many topics over the past year. To the point where I don't think I can keep doing this without repeating the same things over and over again. So the podcast of this format will finally end. However, what I'm moving on to will be illustration and art analysis. People can always go back to my previous podcast if they want to really learn some of the art theories that I've mentioned. However, the art analysis will take advantage and take use of all the things I've talked about and describe to you why I feel a certain artwork is working. And I feel this is a very important part of the growth of an artist, to be able to really dig deep and understand why a piece of artwork is demonstrating the right fundamentals. Now, of course, artwork is always subjective and it's prone to my own biases as well, but I'll try my best to really indicate when I'm being more subjective and when I'm being more objective about maybe the techniques and the technical side of the artwork. Now, it doesn't mean that I will stop talking about art theory. I figured a lot of times when I'm making these podcasts, I am not really having enough time to really describe my theories. And as well as people might have imagined I'm not the best talker out there. So I decided to bring that type of technical talk to my new blog, Charles Art Odyssey. Right now I already wrote two extensive blog posts about two different topics that I've talked about in these podcasts. Now, these would actually bring a lot more light to what I've talked about over the past year, and hopefully you find it more helpful by reading rather than listening to my monotone voice the entire time. So let's get on to the final topic of this podcast. It's the idea that will encompass everything I've talked about into a convenient idea. And it's the idea of universe creation. No matter how we do it, what we do, on what medium, artwork is an idea of creating universe. Now, even if we are doing one illustration, one panel, one painting. We are essentially creating a universe. And that one frame is sort of like taking a photograph when you get transported into the universe. Now why is this important to understand? Universes must abide to the laws of their own rules. I repeat, Universes must obey, abide to the same rules consistently. Now think of it this way as well. Every artist style will have their own set of rules in their universe. I feel a lot of people when they think of style, they look at the superficial part of it. They look at really how the artist, for instance, draws eyes, how do they draw humans, how do they draw animals. Now, that's all important, but it kind of encompasses a bigger picture. It's the idea of how does the universe work? If you watch 
cartoons like Steven Universe or Rick and Morty, every cartoon, every style, especially the ones which really deviate from reality, they all follow their own rules. And it comes down to not only how the show looks, but also how the story progresses, how the pacing of the storyline goes, what the characters in their story has to abide to as well. And within that, all the rules must be followed, and when they are followed, even if they're breaking reality's rules, because they are following their own universe, their style, in a way, works. Now, uh, of course, I've written a huge post in regards to this on my blog, and you can check it out yourself, but I'm going to briefly describe what I mean. If you are an artist, you really want to understand what you prefer as your own universe. Now, that's not to say I want you to overthink every aspect of your art. A lot of art is really subconscious in the end. But I really want you to understand why you like certain things. Everyone has their own preferences and tastes. And it's, there's nothing wrong with that. To be really professional, however, I really do believe that every artist will have to self-reflect and really dig deep as to why they like things. Whereas the audience, they can really look at a movie, for instance, and be like, eh, I like this, or eh, I, I don't really like this, and be at home and not really think about it. But to really be an artist, to really do what artists do, you really have to understand why in every single thing. This can come from, hey, why do I like drawing this sort of subject matter? Maybe you really like dogs, and that's really your universe. You just have a ton of dogs. Now, within that same universe, how do you draw the dogs? Maybe you like dogs with very big eyes. Maybe you like blue dogs. I don't know. Now, of course, if you choose these set of rules, breaking those rules abruptly will always change your style. If you look at any established artist, they have a very distinct universe creation. Their rules will always be followed. For instance, if you look at anime, now, anime could encompass a ton of different sub-styles as well, but let's look at it from a broader sense of view. Anime, in general, has bigger eyes, especially for females. Now, if you were to suddenly put a female with a very realistic face in the presence of a ton of characters who have really big eyes, then you might start questioning things. To really dig deep to how effective universe creation is, isn't it crazy that we can be so embedded, so immersed in a universe where so many humans are, have really big eyes, four times the size that we have in reality. It's actually mind-blowing that we can really be in that universe, despite the fact that they look nothing like us. We can relate to characters who look nothing like us, and they're not even real. And again, that's really what we all want to achieve as artists. We want to hit that point where we can send messages for our audience without people thinking about the mistakes, about the technical side, and about things that just don't fit in the universe. We want to have our art styles not noticeable at all. 
I repeat, our goal is as artists to create a style where people can ignore the style and really focus on the storytelling, the message, the idea. That's not to say the audience can't appreciate the technical side of things, but it's sort of like watching a movie that everything just clicks. If you've ever watched really bad movies, you always look at the fact that it's a movie firsthand before you really delve deep into the movie. Whereas great movies, great universes like Star Wars, you're watching it because it's immersing you and not because the Stormtrooper's hat might be drawn incorrectly or it might not be following the rules that they've created. To end it off, I'm sure everyone watched the prequels for Star Wars. And now it might be a bit showing my age here because I know there might be a lot of millennials, people who are born after the year 2000, but bear with me. Star Wars Episode 1. Anyone who watched that movie will know that there is one character that breaks the universe's rules and why it was m a much worse movie from the perception than it should be. Now there's a lot of things wrong with the movie, but bear with me, let's for the sake of argument, argument and for this final podcast that we talk about this one character. Did anyone notice that Jar Jar Binks was really playing by its own set of rules? The fact that this one character breaks the rules of Star Wars that we love and know from the first three movies that everyone noticed and everyone on the internet started complaining about it. And it's true, like it's really abrupt and it goes to show just how important it is to be consistent. And now of course the movies have a ton of people and artists working on this but it's the same idea. Create your own universe and know the rules and don't break them. And if you know this and execute properly, you will find your own style. And this, my friends, is what encompasses every technical knowledge that I've talked about. It all comes down to creating that universe in order to send your own messages to the world for generations to come. Thank you for listening to everything. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and hopefully you've learned a lot from the art theories. For next time, next year, I will start having artwork analysis. And of course, check out my blog if you really want to learn more about art theory in a text format and hopefully that will help you as well. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.